Hi, George here, and today I'll show you how you can use Photoshop Elements to add a photo or image to a layer. There are five basic ways to add a photo or image into Photoshop Elements, and I'll show you each one of those. Then we'll go ahead and we'll do this project right here using two images that we've placed into this new project file. I'll just close this project down. Now we need to first download a couple of images. So we bring up a browser window for that. And we'll be downloading these from Pixabay, my favorite place for doing this kind of image search. And first, let's get this abstract background. Now I'll put this link in the description so you can download this directly. Now I have an account here with Pixabay. It's a free account. It just makes it a little bit faster to download. If you don't have a free account, then you'll just get one of those little capsule windows things happening when you do your download. No big deal. Free download. Now you want the 1920 by 1280 image size. Choose download. And I'll put this into a folder that I use named Projects. Just choose Save. There we go. Okay, that one's taken care of. Let's now get this dog picture right here. Same thing. Free download. You want that same size, 1920 by 12. In this case, it's 1275. That's okay. Choose Download. Put it into the same location. Choose Save. And we now have our images. Okay, let's just go ahead and we can close this down. And back over here to Photoshop Elements. And the first thing we'll do here is to make a new file. Let's go up to File, come down to New, Blank File. And I'll put this at the default Photoshop Elements size right there, which is 6x4, resolution of 300. It's a wide image, as you can see. Choose OK. Now mine comes in as a floating window. We'll need this in this project. So here's how you do that. Go up to the Edit menu, come down to Preferences and General right there. And then make sure that this one checkbox is checked. Allow floating documents in expert mode. Choose OK, and we're all set. Now on this one, I'll just dock this up here at the top. Just pull it up until it kind of goes gray. Let go, and that then docks that as a tab. Now you can either undock it, just grab your tab and pull it down, or you can dock it back up here again. So you can go back and forth between docked and floating that easily. And then I'll use the Control-0 keyboard shortcut to fit that to fill the screen. All right, let's now bring in our first image. We'll do the background image. Go up here to File, come down to Open, and find the folder you save this in. And there it is right here. Choose Open. And this again comes in as a floating window. And here's the first way to bring an image onto a layer, put an image onto a layer inside of Photoshop Elements. And that's just to take the image here and drag and drop right like that into the image. Okay, there we go. I'll close this one down. This is now in here as a new layer, as you can see right there. You can also see there's a little bounding box around this. You can see a bit if I pull it down a little bit like that. Little control tab right here, control handle, control handle right down here, one in the top middle right here. I pull off the picture here a bit. You can see that edge right there. So that's the control handles to allow you to resize the image. This comes in at just about the right size. It's a little washed out. We'll be fixing that later in this project. And if you need to resize the image, just grab a corner. And you can then just resize the image just like that so it's the size and fit that you want. Okay, I'll leave that alone. Let's now bring in that dog. And this time we'll use the place command. Go over here to file and come down to place. And there's the dog picture. Choose place. And that comes in and then fills the image. Now notice that it comes in and fills it exactly. That's because Photoshop Elements tries to fill the image without going beyond your boundaries if you use the place command. In other words, it tries to resize the image exactly to fit your working area. Now just hit that green check mark. There we go, that's now been placed in here. Now notice up here on that layer, there's kind of a funny little icon here, bottom right hand corner. Whenever you place a file in here using the place command, it's going to come in as a smart object layer, which means it has a certain level of protections on it. I can't change the actual pixels on this layer. I can demonstrate that by grabbing a paintbrush here, and I have my black foreground color try to paint on this, and I can't do that. It doesn't let me because the pixels are protected. Or I want to appear to filter any of these filters. I'll just do an artistic one, and let's just do a neon glow. Same thing, I can't do that because that would change the pixels on this layer. So these smart object layers are protected layers. You can unprotect a layer by going up here to your layer, right-clicking on the name, and then come down to Simplify Layer. That converts it from a smart object layer into a regular image layer. One benefit about having a protected smart object layer is if I resize this image, I'll grab my control handle, I'll just resize it like that, hit that green check mark. When you do that, Photoshop Elements goes back to the original image that you opened up or placed and resizes from the original image, and you'll keep the best quality that way. If I resize this again like that, that's a second resize. Here's a third resize. There's a fourth resize right there. 
There's that fifth one. And then we'll just reposition this and do our final one up here to the right size. This is number six. Now, each time I did that, each time I resized this image, Photoshop Elements went back and grabbed that from the original image and resized based on the original image. So it retains the most quality. Now, normally you're not gonna be resizing images that much. You do it once or maybe twice and it's not really gonna be noticeable, but just keep in mind that you can resize and it will go back to the original. So it will give you the best quality in there. It's a little bit too big here. I want them just a bit smaller than that actually for our finished image, which is right around down here someplace. Kind of like that. We'll come back and do more with this in just a little bit. So that is our second way using the place command to place an image in here in your project file. Now the third way is to simply make a duplicate or copy of an existing layer. So if I want to have two copies of this layer here, just right click on the name of the layer and choose duplicate layer, choose okay, and it makes a copy of that layer. So we've now placed a new layer in here with an image which is a copy of a previous layer. We also could make a selection on this. Let's just say I grab my lasso tool over here. I just made a real loose lasso around the dog, just like that, nothing special here. So I did this. I can put this onto a new layer by going up here to layer, come down to new and new layer via copy or via cut. I'll do via copy and it places that image onto a new layer or at least the selected part of the image onto a new layer right here. So you can use a selection and then copy or cut that to a new layer using the layer command, layer and new. Now, another way that you can bring an image into a new layer here inside of Photoshop Elements is to copy and paste. So I'll go over here and I'm going to bring up that bokeh image here. I'll use a control A keyboard shortcut to select the whole picture. It's kind of a select all for A. And then go up here to edit and we'll copy that. And I'll close this down and let's make a new layer in here and then edit and paste. And that brings it in again as a new layer. Notice that this does not come in as a smart layer. We don't have that little smart layer icon. It's just a regular layer, which means I could come in here and actually paint on that layer like that. So the layer is not protected. Okay, I'll just delete that one layer, get that out of there. There we go. And then the fifth way to bring an image into a new layer here inside of Photoshop Elements, let's use the photo bin which is right down here. Here's our photo bin. Notice that we see our project file right here. Let's open up a new file, file, and we'll open and open that dog up right here. When I open this up, it comes down here in the photo bin. If I minimize that, it's still in the photo bin down here. So here's the working file. That's what's selected. And then I'll grab and pull at the same time. So grab and pull like that and let go. And that then drags and drops this image into the currently open image and you see it right there. So that's one more way to bring this in. And notice again, we have that smart object layer icon right down here. So this comes in, if you do the drag and drop from the photo bin, it comes in just like doing a place using the place command. We don't see that big kind of an X thing in here, but it's the exact same thing. Okay, I'll just get rid of these layers that we don't need. We'll trash that one and we'll trash that dog right here. And I'll trash that one get us back down to having just these two layers right there. Okay, let's now replace the background in here, or actually we'd be placing him into a different background, which is that bokeh lights in the background there. Now for this, I wanna make a selection around our dog. Make sure you're on the dog layer, and we are, that's fine. And I'll just use the standard lasso tool right here. I have my feathering set at one pixel, and it's a new selection. And I'll start up here and I'll just make this a little selection right around the dog here. I'm coming in close to the edge of the dog, but not right up against it. I don't want to be real precise about this. It doesn't matter. But I do want to stay just outside of the dog. If you go in a little bit, it's okay. It's not a big problem. But it's easier if you're just a little ways outside. And just follow along. As you can see, this is going pretty fast. I'm just trying to make a nice little selection back to our beginning point and cross over that. There's a selection. Let's now come down here to the Refine Edge button. Now on the Refine Edge, I normally use this overlay. It's kind of a red overlay. In most cases, it's very easy to see that edge. I'll leave all these adjustments here alone. I don't need any of this kind of fancier stuff for this one. It's an easy project. And I'll just take this brush right now. It's at 35. And this is good for this particular image. And then brush right along that open space there between the red outline or that red overlay and the dog photo. Just kind of go right on top of that. And what this does is it tells Photoshop Elements to go back and re-examine that edge, find that edge, 
into a much tighter selection for you. So it does all the work for you. You just have to be close and then tell it where to focus its attention. It then goes in and makes a real nice tight edge for you. And that's a bit of automation in there. You could call this an AI trick actually, artificial intelligence, where it's looking for and finding that edge and doing a nice clean suction for you without you having to do any real hard work. I find this works best though if you do it in short strokes like I'm doing here, just let it come in and figure this out. It also works best if your existing background, we have kind of a dark background in here, if your existing background is similar to the background you're going on to, and ours is they both have dark backgrounds, although we do have some brightness with those lights, but they're similar backgrounds, and you get the best result if you do that. Okay, I want to output this too. New layer with layer mask. There's another way of making a new layer, getting image onto a new layer, right here from the Refine Edge dialog box. New layer with layer mask, choose OK. There we go, and you can see there's that new layer up here. Now, if this happens where you don't see an image up in there, if it disappears, this is a little glitch that happens occasionally here inside of Photoshop Elements. I began seeing this a couple of years ago and I'm still seeing it now. Don't know why, but all you have to do is just to save your image and then open it up again. It's a good chance right now, or a good time right now to save the image anyway. So let's go ahead and do that. Go up to File, and I'll come down to Save. And I'll put it in the same Projects folder. And I'll just call this Photo to Layer. Choose Save. Let's now close this, close that. And I'll reopen that project. There we are, and there's our layers now showing. So if you ever see that happen, just close it down, reopen it, and that should take care of it. Now in here's a little bit of a ghosting right along in here, more layer mask. We don't see anything else anyplace else, but a little bit of ghosting happening right in here. It's not that bad. You can kind of see it better here. Just real little subtle dark edge right along there. You can fix that on the layer mask side, go over here, and then go to this tool right here. This is your dodge tool. You may be seeing a hand tool up there. When you want is that hand tool. And set this to match the edge you're seeing. We're seeing a dark edge. So I'll set this here for shadows. Exposure is at 50%. Let's bring our brush size up quite a bit here so I can see it better. That's pretty good. Let me do this at about a 50. There's that brush size. That's good. And then just brush right along that edge. And it should tighten that edge up a little bit. There we go. You see it's kind of tightening up the edge right in there. Doesn't need much. And then this area right up in here. And that's good. Okay. That's all taken care of. Let's now position the dark where I want them, which is right about down here. You see, there's the bottom of that picture. I want that, of course, at the bottom. And I want them covering up some of these bright spots on the left-hand side. So over here a bit, make them a little bit larger. Just like that, that covers up all those bright spots. And I think that position is pretty good. She's okay. All right, so that's looking nice, but the background needs to be much more contrasty. And I think he needs a bit more contrast as well. So let's go to the background first. Come down to the background layer, go up to layer, come down to new adjustment layer, and you want levels. Check that checkbox where it says use previous layer. And we have three controls here. Left side is your blacks, right side your whites, and this is your middle values. Pull the blacks in, that will darken down that background. Like that, you can see most of the black is up in this range here. If you go too far, it begins losing everything else. You want to come down, you notice the background is dark without really losing anything else. I think right about in here is pretty good. Pull your whites in as well. That brightens the whites back up again. And then you can play with the mid-tone controls. I want to keep that black. And I think that looks pretty good. It's a 46 and a 1 and a 201 on my numbers down here. You can just type those in if you wanted to, if you knew what numbers you wanted. We'll leave that. So now go up here to the dog layers at the top and with the layer mask. And same thing, layer, come down to adjustment layer right here, levels. Again, check that checkbox, choose OK. And same thing, but not as much. So we're reaching the blacks up in here just a bit. And I think that's nice right here. Let's lighten our, our lights up a bit. And I think that matches pretty well. If I go too far, it begins looking fake like that. I just want to just brighten up enough so it looks like it's lit by lights at night, kind of an effect in here. So it's a bit brighter than I'd normally do for a daytime shot, a bit more contrasty, but you get more contrast with these kind of lights. And there we go. There is our dog picture. Now, if you enjoyed this project, click on the thanks button right down below the bottom right-hand corner of the video. Send me a thanks. I greatly appreciate that. My channel is 100% supported by fan activity. Either you're watching your videos or you're supporting my channel by purchasing my training courses or by sending these thanks. And this helps me be able to continue making videos here for you on YouTube. Don't forget to check out my channel. I have hundreds of videos over there for Photoshop Elements. I also have a complete training course for Photoshop Elements. There's a link for that right down there in the description. That's the best way to learn this program. And I'll see you next time.